Nuwara Elia is situated 75 kilometers away from Kandy and 158 kilometers away from Colombo. It is located at an altitude of 6,000 feet. The road journey to Nuwara Elia is windy and bumpy. Nuwara Elia is also nicknamed Little England because it was a place of retreat for the British colonialists and for its cool climate. Sri Lanka is very well known for its tea. Nuwara Elia is the most important location in Sri Lanka for tea production. A trip to one of the tea factory will give you a better understanding of how the final product of tea is made. You will discover the different types of tea. There are different tea grades such as OP, PICO, BOP, BOPF, and thus number one. These tea grades range from the weakest to the strongest tea, and of course, there's the green tea, black tea, and the white tea. The process is really simple. When you are visiting Noara Elia, take your time to walk around the city. Visit the local market and gardens. Many of the buildings retain its English-style architecture. There is an optional route from Nuwara Elia to Yala that will lead you to the second tallest waterfall in Sri Lanka. Get ready to be amazed by a breathtaking scene of the majestic waterfall known as Dialuma Falls which has a height of 628 feet. Yala is situated 186 kilometers away from Nuwara Elia and 300 kilometers from Colombo. Yala National Park covers 979 square kilometers and is the most visited national park in Sri Lanka. It was established in 1900 as a wildlife sanctuary and later converted in 1938 to a national park. The mean annual rainfall ranges between 500 to 700 millimeters. The park contains five blocks, of which two are open to the public. There are 215 bird species, 44 mammal species, 46 reptile species, and 18 amphibian species in the park.
The safari will take about 3 hours. Here, you will get to see the animals roaming freely in their natural habitat. Unless you are in luck, you will not get to see the leopards, snakes, or sloth bears. You need to be patient and have a sharp eye to sight as many animals on the tour. At the ending part of the safari, you will be taken to the beach for a contrasting view of the Indian Ocean. Due to the rainy weather, our jeep's tire slid onto the mud and we needed to climb off the vehicle and wait for another vehicle to pull our jeep out of the mud. Gaul is situated 119 kilometers away from Colombo and 182 kilometers away from Yala. It is the fourth largest city in Sri Lanka. Gaul had been a prominent seaport long before the arrival of the Portuguese. The city is the best example of a fortified city built by the Portuguese in Southeast Asia. Many of the buildings in Gaul still retains its Portuguese architecture. Gaul Fort was first built in 1588 by the Portuguese and later fortified by the Dutch during the 17th century. When the Portuguese were forced to return to Gaul, they had built a small fort and later extended it. In 1640, the Dutch took over Gaul Fort and had made many fortifications. The Madhuganga River is a shallow water body in southwest Sri Lanka which enters the sea at Balapitiya. It is 49 kilometers away from Gaul and it forms the Madhuganga wetland together with the Randombi Lake. Madhu River is home to 300 plant species. The most important asset of the river is its mangrove forests which provide protection to many aquatic species. The residents on the river still use a traditional method of catching prawns at night. Places very ideal for the prawns, crab hatchery, natural hatcheries for prawns and crabs. You may want to visit the Buddhist temple on an isolated island on the river. It is known as the Kothdua Temple. The temple was founded in the 1860s. It is believed that the temple once sheltered the sacred tooth relic of the Buddha that is now located at Kandy. After the tooth relic was moved out of the temple, 
The island was neglected until a businessman named Samson Raja Pakse took interest in the area. Many of the residents produce cinnamon and cinnamon oil out of cinnamon tree stem. Negombo is the fifth largest city in Sri Lanka. It is located 157 kilometers away from Gaul and 33 kilometers from Colombo. The Nagombo Lagoon serves as a source of many fishes, crabs, and shrimps to the fishermen. The fishermen rely on their own traditional knowledge to bring in catches. Their boats were said to have been brought to Sri Lanka by the Portuguese traders in the 17th century. The economy of Nagombo lies heavily on its centuries-old fishing industry. The Gombo fish market is the country's second largest fish market. The market offers a wide variety of fishes, including dry fish, squid, lobsters, prawns, and so on. Fish auctions are conducted daily. The Dutch fort built in 1672 has now been converted into a prison. Only the remnants of the fort's archway and walls can be seen. There is a church situated on a small hill near the fort which is open to visitors as well. The Saint Sebastian Church is the biggest church in Ngombo. It was designed by a French priest and was built in 1936. Many of the Catholics prayed to St. Sebastian during the Portuguese times due to the deadly diseases being spread in the Gombo. Colombo is the commercial capital and the largest city in Sri Lanka with a population of 4.6 million. It was made the capital of the island when Sri Lanka was ceded to the British Empire in 1815. As Colombo possesses a natural harbour, it was known to traders all over the world 2,000 years ago. When the British captured Colombo in 1796, they were responsible for much of the planning of the present city. Finally, in 1948, Sri Lanka gained independence from the British. Ganga Ramaya Temple is one of the most famous temples in Colombo. Don Bastian, who was a famous shipping merchant in the 1800s, built the temple with the assistance of the people. The temple is a mixture of Sri Lankan, Thai, Indian and Chinese architecture. Sri Lanka is very well known for its food and spices. Don't miss out on the local food, especially the local curry dishes. And that concludes part 2 of my Sri Lanka series. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next series. If you haven't watched my Myanmar series, now's a good time to click the link in the video.